Everything on today's episode is bold and spicy. A couple of bold predictions from each of us. We've got the big Cam Newton, Mac Jones news to talk about and a lot more. Make sure you listen, tune in, subscribe, and enjoy. Foot Clan, if you're traveling to a destination where you don't know the language, that could be challenging. I, I went across the border to Mexico, and I did not know the old Espanol, but I have signed up with Babbel. That's the language I've chosen to work on through 15-minute lessons that make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language apps, they use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons are created by over 100 language apps experts. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective, and you can learn from 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, and German, others, and they're even going to help you with your pronunciation and your accent. There are so many ways Bonjour. to learn. With, oh, well done, Andy. You can use podcasts, games, video stories, so many ways to learn with Babbel, and right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code FOOTBALLERS for an extra three months for free. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, August 31st, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Bold predictions episode. It's going to be hot. Very hot and spicy today. Jason took, was rubbing his belly. I took my thumbs. Ooh. Don't not, need that indigestion from this episode. What not, was that again? <laughs> indigestion. Not now, you normally, you normally gas X before you do almost anything. That's true. I mean, but I, I, you I, know, I'm assumed. awake, so you know I'm morning yeah. gas X. Is that your pre-workout as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, pre-workout, post-workout, <laughs> and mid-workout. Uh, we have breaking NFL news to talk about that are go that's going to have vast fantasy football implications. Already have the adjustments made within the ultimate draft kit. If you don't have it and you're getting ready for a draft this weekend, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Be prepared. If you have drafted, we'd love to see your draft grade. Go use the draft analyzer, which is part of the UDK plus share it with us. Tag us. I like the camaraderie that is built when someone tags me and says, you liked my team the most. I don't. We had somebody, Mike, that they did their draft. They mm -hmm. ran it. And they, uh, I was I was the baller that liked his team the most. It was I'm, like, I'm sorry. It was like a B-plus team. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. And they made a change. They changed one player from their bench. They ended up releasing somebody and signing Ryan Fitzpatrick from the waiver wire, mm. which changed – his team to having you be their more favorite, the baller that liked the team the most. Uh, he was, he brought sexy back to that team. So sounds I, like that analyzer is working pretty <laughs> perfectly. So yeah, as soon as you add the beard to the bench, Mike <laughs> apparently likes I'm in. Team the most. Uh, we are still, uh, we still have the Megalobol open right now. Uh, Megalobol.com over 11,000 of you have joined so far. There is still time drafts start on the fifth. So get in there. Basically, it's so easy. Megalobowl.com. You go in there, join the league, pick mm -hmm. a draft time, and uh, participate in the largest fantasy football contest that we know about. Yeah, don't be a chicken. Hey, are you Are you the best? Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right, looking at some recent storylines, some hype, and asking ourselves whether there's something to the story. We had the report from Yahoo, Charles Robinson, saying the Dolphins are the front runner for Deshaun Watson. Texans are seeking three first round picks, two seconds. You might as well say you're seeking like 10 first round picks at this point. Uh, other verified sources are saying the report is legitimate, that the Dolphins have inquired, that trades have been discussed. I've seen reports that Watson turned down a 
definitive opportunity to go to the Eagles. He has a no-trade clause. He chose not to go, and then they traded for Minshew. Um, there was also a report this morning that the Texans are prepared to sit him every week and that it's unlikely he'll be traded soon. That's that's great for that franchise. I mean, <laughs> you're already the worst, and now you get to you have a 52 man roster. You literally are subtracting one player off of your active daily roster. Um, that's going to hurt. So there is a ton of smoke here. I mean, this this is not um, one report. This is not uh, unverified. Nobody's saying this. Th th there is a ton of smoke. The question about whether or not there's fire and whether this trade happens, I can't seem to wrap my head around it from a human perspective. It makes no sense. The only reason that you would ever trade for Deshaun Watson with the baggage he is carrying is to get a discount, right? Yeah, I, I'm starting to see it now. I, I, I'm starting to understand. In my, I think maybe they know that the discount they, – the Texans don't want to give a discount on a franchise quarterback. Right. So if they bench him all year, the legal situation sorts itself out, they get full price next offseason. Mm. Isn't that the best thing? The team Maybe. is not one year or one Watson trade away, one discount Watson trade away from competing. Could the he, best thing that they can do is trade him at maximum value. And if, if that's true, if like right now you have to trade him at a discount, why wouldn't you bench him for a year and then trade him for full value? Yeah, this story is a few layers deep because the – Deshaun Watson's discontent with the, the franchise, with the Houston Texans, was before the surfacing of the 23 allegations of, of sexual misconduct. Like He had already said, I don't want to be on this team. I'm not going to play for this team. And then it was, all, then you can't trade. Like No, no other team is going to trade for him while you have all of that just garbage on the uh, uh off the field you have no idea what the resolution is going to be is he going to be suspended for a couple games is he going to be suspended for an entire season when is that going to happen so this these the smoke of these trade rumors is so bizarre to me because these are very these are reporters that I trust and it's not just one of them coming out and saying that it's likely to happen but I I can't imagine that Miami is going to do that, and then that leads us into a whole different conversation of Tua. Uh, of okay, Philadelphia. I mean, if you were if you had a trade a trade truly lined up for Deshaun Watson, means your faith in Jalen Hurts is minimal. If you're the Dolphins and you are truly the front runner for Deshaun Watson, your faith in Tua is minimal, even yes. though he's had a, tr a tremendous preseason. So this this story is. So wild because it just spider webs out with with uh, with ramifications all over the entire NFL. You're right, everything you said there, I, and that's why it's fire to me. The story is fire, whether it happens now or later. This is not smoke. Watson will be traded. Dynasty implications for the quarterbacks mentioned. Where hey, I mean, look, if the team doesn't have confidence in you, you might not be a starter the rest of your career. We saw it last year a decent Tampa Bay team knows the difference between Jameis Winston and Tom Brady and goes out and makes the change. And the fans I've talked to, they want Watson. They the, want the, the Dolphin the, fans? Yeah, yeah, the Philly fans. They, <clears throat> they wanted the opportunity to have a – you're not going to win in this league without the best at quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, on a long enough timeline, it's certainly fired. Deshaun Watson is going to be traded. He's not going to play for the Houston Texans. I think the question is some of these reports have been that the that this is imminent, that the deal is basically done. And I think that's the question is, is there fire to that smoke? Is it, What do you think, Andy, that the chances of Deshaun Watson being traded in the, in the next five weeks, uh, early into this season? Because that's what's being reported is that it's it's ready to right. go. And that's where I, I that's where I just can't believe I don't that there's it. fire there. I think that's I smoke. It would be quite the PR hit for a team to unload five future draft classes or whatever the cost is that's being reported moments before the season begins to sit a player, just pull all of the confidence, destroy the locker room. It makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah, you're massively splitting things. And if you're if you're Houston, 
and Miami really is the trade partner. How is Tua not involved in the draft in the trade? That's why. That's why that those parts seem like smoke that is unbelievable. Well, I mean, I will say this: if if you are a general manager that does not believe in Tua getting Tua back, that's an expensive asset that the, in the in the eyes of Miami. And you might be saying, "I don't want him to be our quarterback. I don't want him to be our future." And you're going to count Tua as two first round picks or something, and and that's probably not what the Texans want. All right, uh, Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson being reported out of New York as the top options in the Jets' backfield to open the season. Smoke or fire? This is fire to me. Yes, hundred percent. I am totally on board with this. The the Michael Carter off season was a it was that was a good time. It was very fun. Um, for all of draft Twitter, of Michael Carter was one of the draft Twitter's favorite. Michael Carter in college, the teammate of Javante Williams. Ends up falling down to the fourth round where it was, okay, we already know that the likelihood of a fourth round running back emerging, the hit rate is very small. So he's already up against it. Uh, but the competition was Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson. Ah, oh, Michael Carter can handle this. Uh, I, I don't think so. I, th I think that if you're drafting Mike, right now, if you're drafting Michael Carter ahead of Tevin Coleman and even Ty Johnson, I think you are making a fantasy football mistake. It's one of those things where you latch on to – uh, and we were just all opinions. Oh yeah, Carter. I, I remember uh, going on Bleacher Report the weekend of the draft, and they were talking about who who looks like a great landing spot. And we brought up Michael Carter. This was right after the NFL draft, yeah. where it was like, I mean, he looked like a talented back in college. He slipped a little bit, but the Jets were one of those teams that has a clear pathway to touches. So that looked exciting, and I think that excitement from the off season. We, we as as fantasy managers sometimes we just we believe so strongly in our opinions that we don't watch what's happening. He's well, not and, working with well, the first team. And it, Coleman gets hurt, and and the whole situation changes. So this is not like kick Carter to the curb. This is just early season expectations, draft expectations. I mean, I remember saying draft Tevin Coleman two months ago because you can buy three or four weeks. At that time, I didn't think Ty Johnson was in the mix. Right. Ty coming into the mix lowers the value of Carter. But Tevin Coleman was going to get the crack to start this season, barring him being cut. So right now, drafting Michael Carter is probably not something you need to do. Just kind of monitor the situation. Look at the waiver wire, right? I mean, if, if one of these other guys gets hurt or the touches start to rise, then you jump on it. Yeah. It, they want it, to be the 49ers of the East. Yes, exactly. It would be surprising to me if Michael Carter – is if you believe in him, uh, it would shock me if whoever drafted Michael Carter has by week two has not dropped him to the waiver wire to replace him. In a redraft? Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Dear friends. Yes. After that draft. Uh, put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup and make every game day more delicious. You can head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover how simple wood fire cooking can be. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The Patriots released Cam Newton this morning. Mac Jones will start week one against Miami. Goodness gracious. I think this was an outstanding decision by the team just due to watching Mac Jones play football. I think it was an outstanding decision to release Cam Newton. Now, I don't know if this was – like, Belichick has a ton of respect for Cam. So I don't know if this was as simple as we're doing this as a courtesy or what I think is the actual genius move is getting the big personality out of the locker room, handing, giving Mac Jones the opportunity to become a leader in the locker room. That wasn't going to happen, in my opinion, with a player-favorite Cam Newton waiting in the wings. Agreed. Hand the team to Mac. What do you guys think about this move and then the uh, fallout for the receivers and the oh, running man, back? Man, there are there are so many pieces that this affects. Obviously, um, Cam as the potential to sign somewhere. I don't think that anywhere uh, will will take him as a starter right now. Only Houston is really the the option. But they're carrying a, a non playing quarterback already on the roster. Mac being the yeah. starter. Um, is a big deal to me for we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of weeks. Damian Harris, mm -hmm. Damian Harris's pathway to fantasy success 
was always touchdowns. We knew the yardage would be there. Between the 20s, he's going to be fantastic. He's the guy. He's looked good. He's been efficient. The offensive line's good. Like, everything lines up. The question was, because he's not involved in the passing game, Will he get the goal line work? He won't with Cam, and he will with Mac Jones. So I have him with eight rushing touchdowns now, and that moved him up considerably. And I, I think that's um, – th this is the type of player, and I wouldn't project this, but this is the type of player that you could see 12, 13, 14 touchdowns if the offense can move. I can't project that with a rookie quarterback. This isn't Tom Brady running the show. This is still a – a you know a first time NFL quarterback. Damien Harris's name may or may not come up in our bold predictions. Oh, I still just knowing Bill, like you're going to see. You know, <laughs> well, I, I called Bill up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you got to remember, Ramondre is six foot two twenty seven. Like, there's a there's the opportunity for him to have goal line carries. That still scares me a little bit. And then James White's going to be out there. And James White's yes. going to be a better player now that Mac is the quarterback as well. Third downs, Mac is not going to be the read option, uh, rush for the first down. I think James White has a better season. Yeah. I think Jacoby Myers has a higher ceiling. I think Nelson Aguilar has a higher ceiling. I, I was just going to say, what does it say that literally every other player on the team has a better season? With Mac Jones, like Johnu Smith, Hunter Henry, who Cam do you, doesn't. Who do you He's think the only does, one? Who do you think does? Do they do better with Mac or Cam? Like Mac, it's it's going to be a more prolific passing attack with with Mac, and that means that there will be some fantasy uh, relevant players here, especially considering that the, all their value in in average draft price is dead. N nobody's been drafting Patriots because. It's just not enough volume to to make it work. Mike, yeah. people want to talk about Mac himself. He was very low for me in terms of yes, the total. He is for me he's as 28 well. or something like that for my quarterbacks. So efficiency is going to be there, but the offense is still going to be, you know, the running game, efficient passing game. Yeah, they're a run first team, and it, at least he's going to be behind a, like a good offensive line. Where for the New York Jets and Zach Wilson, the other rookie who I've I've got, you know, very low in my fantasy rankings. You're hoping that the Jets offensive line puts it together. Meanwhile, the Pats are pretty solid up there. So Mac Jones, I think, has a – his opportunity will be easier to to develop into that franchise quarterback sooner than Zach Wilson. Trey Lance will miss a week with – Come on, man. What, with what's being called a chip in his finger. Oh, they chipped him. He hit his right hand on a defender's helmet in the final preseason game. I There was some real Matt Nagy magic going on here from Kyle Shanahan. I don't know if you saw this. He wouldn't even tell the reporters what finger. Said, <laughs> he said, I'm not going to tell you which finger it is. It's a secret. That means it's the middle finger. <laughs> hit his right hand, chipped it. No real concerns, according to our injury expert, Matthew Betts. Uh, however, I mean, missing a week is missing yeah. a week. You're probably not winning the starting job at this point. That's what it really affects yes. the most is the potential for him to have been named the week one starter has had never seemed higher than a couple of days ago after the preseason game. It just seemed like they could they could make that call. But now your first week leading up to the game, he's not able to participate. You're not having him the starter. Go go reach out and grab Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan. If you drafted Trey Lance and you were hoping he'd become the starter, go go find out your week one, week two situation. I got a cheap quarterback on today's episode. You can grab. Yeah, yes, you do. Okay. Carson Wentz placed on the COVID reserve list. The Colts, I think, are the least vaccinated team, and they have something going on because Wentz, Pascal, Ryan Kelly, uh, they're all on the – They're close contacts. Cl yeah, they're all on the close contact list, just delaying some practice time, uh, I guess, with a – Injury for a couple of those players. I mean, we didn't. The time off isn't the end of the world. You didn't bad vibes the Colts yesterday, but I mean, if you're going off of just the vibrations in the air, what? <laughs> like Indianapolis, like guys getting hurt. You're, you're. Is that you're, the midichlorians? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, there, there's nothing actual tangible about this. It's just feeling and emotions of. Guy's getting hurt. Your quarterback, he, I guess might, with be, Hilton he and... might be out the for half the season. Oh, he kind of comes back. Now T.Y. Hilton is out. Now Carson Wentz is on the COVID list. It's like You're losing linemen. The the vibrations there. Not great. They're not, no, they're not great. I've got some news that 
might frighten a man that I know has drafted Irv Smith in many places. Um, we're still waiting to hear about the meniscus surgery, but Matthew Betts, our injury expert, said if they just remove the torn portion of the portion of the meniscus, he'll be out four to six weeks. Yes. If they repair it, he could be six months, which would force him to miss most of the year, which would be disappointing for yeah, a breakout potential. Super disappointing. I in our any what Andy's referring to is in our league of record. I fully punted the the tight end position just the way that my draft was working out. I waited till the very end. And because we have two IR spots, I drafted Irv Smith and moved him immediately to the IR. So now week one, I will be streaming the tight end position. But I had to, because I punted, you're hoping that Irv Smith, who I had projected as a top 10 tight end, is back sooner than later. Interesting news here with uh, Hurricane Ida and New Orleans. They might not play a home game until week eight. They Wow. It's likely that the first game of the season, which would have been a home game, is going to be moved, and they're on the road for three of the next four. So if they move the Saints week four game against the Giants, they won't play at home until after the bye in week eight. Man. So you have some, I mean, tough which, road, road matchups there where you're at New England, at Washington, at Seattle. That's... Not great for a team without Michael Thomas and yeah. a change of quarterback. Yeah, not a good start, but I would I would presume the opposite then would be true for the playoff weeks. You get Michael Thomas back and you got to stretch at home for the second half of the season. But who's the quarterback? It's Jameis Winston. Okay. There's no way he could lose the job. What's he gonna do? Throw some interceptions? Peyton Barber was released by the Washington football team. I'm I'm not surprised. Jar I'm not either. Jarrett Patterson's looked great at, yeah. in that role. So it'll be Gibson, McKissick, and Patterson. And then the Packers uh, news broke this morning. Their left tackle. This is bad. David Bakhtiari uh, on the pup list to start the year. He's going to miss six weeks. How are you feeling, Al? Not great. Okay. Well, and they lost their center in free agency. So this is something we haven't really talked about a lot. But this offensive line – um, certainly downgraded from last year's super efficient offense. So something to monitor. All right, that was today's news and notes presented, as always, by Sleeper. They are the platform that listens to the people. 21 new things for 2021. Um, it's almost comedic how little changes on other platforms and how much mm. changes on mm. Sleeper. Not going to name names. Uh, so definitely check that out. And before we jump into the bold... Prediction. Spicy. Jason's got his gas X ready. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing your first awful pick. Uh, I've got all the gas X. I know. We, if you want to step out of the room for it, that's fine. I probably will. Um, but, <laughs> but we want to thank uh, our partners that support this podcast. Keep it going five days a week. Six if we give you a bonus episode. Bonus. Like, like we did last week. We want to thank Indochino. Uh, look, the right outfit can bring out something special in each of us. Jason was flashing his new suit on the gram a while back. Mm -hmm, looking we, we fire. We call it the gram because we are so young and hip. Uh, <laughs> but look, creating your best look can be more affordable than you think, and it can double. It can go to your draft. I mean, you can wear, you can show up looking nice for your draft if you wanted to. Uh, both of these guys, Mike and Jason, you went to the local showroom. Yes, I did. Indeed. And you said it was super easy. Incredibly easy, and then I got a suit that fit. Like a glove. Now, I did the uh, the online measurements mm -hmm. and got a suit that fits like a glove. Um, I, I'll be honest. I'm not I'm not so great with the tape, so I had my wife help measure, yeah. and I picked my own liner, and it looks it looks amazing. And they, but it worked out, and you have a great suit. It's great. Custom-fitted suit, shirts, casual wear, affordable. People don't think it's affordable. It's very affordable. Indochino is now open at select Nordstrom stores, so that's another way to go get a great fitting. Uh, and get personalized clothing. You can find your nearest location at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That is a $50 savings off a purchase of $3.99 or more at INDOCHINO.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Football is right around the corner, and you can get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and with the NFL returning, DraftKings is giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly when you bet $1 or more on any football game. That is an outrageous deal. Head to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, place a bet of $1 or more on any week one game, and you will get $200 in free bets instantly. 
If Sportsbook is not yet available in your state, DraftKings still has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season long with their daily fantasy contests. And for week one, DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at one million dollars that is the top prize DraftKings is doing it right doing it big for week one download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ballers to receive two hundred dollars in free bets when you place a one dollar bet on any football game get that free shot at a million dollar top prize with your first deposit that's promo code ballers for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL must be 21 or older New Jersey Indiana Pennsylvania only New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in, in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Ridiculously Bold Predictions. Yeah. It's time. Was that a, a pirate? I'm just that. You'd be that a great. Gets me you'd be up. a great pirate. Can I say something? Yeah, that means a lot. Okay, I, I just think of all of us. I mean, I know. I guess Mike would be a great pirate too. Yeah, that's true. I think you would both be great pirates. Did you ever want to? Was was pirate part of your your imaginary play as a kid? No, not really. Pirate was not my wheel. Pirate life wasn't for you. No, nah, and then I grew oh. up and I found out pirates are like they're really bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that. Uh, it's not a really uh, glorifying uh, 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 character per profession. Here. Yeah. Uh, he, well, what if you pirate for good? I was going like to ask Robin the question: Hood. Is there a, were there any good pirates? I'm sure there. Oh, were. They like have pulled to be. up on another boat and they're like, "Here's some oranges. Like, you guys look hungry." Hmm. I don't know if they're <laughs> that good. Okay. Well, if if they did, I mean, scurvy, number one problem. That's of what pirates. I'm saying. Yeah, and and all. Uh, ship faring people uh here's here, some citrus <laughs> yeah sorry that's why the oranges came out uh <laughs> i had scurvy on the mind bold predictions time for 2021 uh i have a 32 shamelessly bold predictions article that is coming out today uh last year had some hits in there like derrick henry leading the league in rushing and rushing touchdowns and tampa making the super bowl and Ooh. yet godwin evans and gronk and all them not being so great or Metcalf over Lockett. So we've got some predictions, two of two predictions each on today's show. So this would be the part where Jason steps out of the room for a moment. I'm sorry to be bringing this forth, but it is what I believe. You hey, should apologize to your parents. It's super bold. Bringing shame upon the Holloway name. Uh, my rankings have uh, reflected this bold prediction throughout the offseason. They do. I did not have to make a tweak to them for this bold prediction to come true because this player I have at 21. Uh, but the bold prediction is this, that Clyde Edwards-Alaire, running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, will finish outside the top 20 running backs. Boo! Again. Boo! Um, and obviously, that is contrary to both of your opinions on Clyde. Uh, but let me make the case for you. Let me tell you why I believe this to be true. Yes, there was a lack of touchdowns last year. Now, that is a negative for a running back, and um, it was a bit odd, a little bit outside the bounds of what you normally see, right? So we're looking at t positive touchdown regression as the cure for what ails Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and maybe that changes. Maybe that magically changes. But I am asking the question here with this bold prediction, why would it change? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some, some situations. Well, will his effectiveness for fantasy change because of the screen game and the passing game i don't think so clyde was horrible he was one of the most inefficient pass catchers at the running back position in football last year fourth worst out of 42 running backs in terms of catch rate 36 of 55 targets there are two players on this team that were much better darrell williams is a 75 percent everything in camp was he's going to be the third down back and then now you have Jarek McKinnon. He's a 75% um, third down back. I watched every snap of Jarek McKinnon yesterday. He looks outstanding in the preseason. He brings an element to this team that they don't have with Clyde on third down. So I think both of those guys are going to siphon a lot of third down looks and targets from Clyde. He will still get some. But he came into the league. Look, I am the biggest Clyde truther out there last year coming into the draft. This is true. I loved him coming in. 
I watched 181 play carries from him last year. I think McKinnon and Darrell Williams are going to offer a little bit more in the passing game. That's why they brought them in. And I think McKinnon looks outstanding, and that's what he's known for. Then I say, well, will he be better because of big plays? Like I said, I saw 181 carries last year. His longest play was 31 yards. He's not a big play guy. He, he's just not. He's a very solid runner, but he not, he's not going to score a lot of long touchdowns. He's not going to score outside the 10. So then I say, well, will it happen on the goal line? And that's my maybe. I think it might happen on the goal line. There's still the chance that Darrell Williams, who's much bigger than Clyde is, Clyde's 5'7", there's still a chance that Darrell Williams siphoned some of those carries. They gave a lot to Lev Bell last year around the goal line. Clyde was still the leader, but he wasn't very good. He got stuffed a lot. And so then I say, well, is the workload going to go up? Is he going to be one of those kill the clock, lots of volume guys? And I got two reasons why I don't think that's going to happen, which is, number one, he's been hurt. He got hurt last year multiple times, ankle and hip. He got hurt already this preseason. And so you're saying, well, does the team trust him to overextend him and give him the kind of workload we would hope for for fantasy? I don't think that's going to happen based on the effectiveness of the other running backs. And he was the worst running back in football when it came to killing the clock and having efficiency. You didn't get Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt end of games. You got the second worst yards per, per carry in the fourth quarter. You got the most stuffed fourth quarter running back. He got stuffed a ton on the goal line. So, again, 21 is where I have him ranked. This is not a Barry Clyde. This is a bold prediction because everybody has him inside the top 20. I don't see it, and I wish I did. I wish I saw Clyde the way that you guys did because I loved him coming out, but I think he ends up outside the top 20 and disappointing people this year. So it is bold, but it is my conviction on Clyde. You can come mean, back in the room, Jason. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I didn't hear a word you said. Good. Good. Um, I, I didn't say anything negative about him. Oh, guy fantastic. Here. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really need to uh, counterpunch here. You could just go back and listen to the My Guys episode for the counter argument. Um, but I'm going to step up here with my next bold prediction. Dun, 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 dun. And this one is Tumsworthy. This one is. <laughs> this I one. love that. Wait, you're starting with this with this heat? Yeah, I'm bringing the fire. <laughs> okay. I'm saying that good old awful quarterback Sam Darnold <laughs> is going to be a top 12 fantasy <laughs> <What>? quarterback <laughs> this year. What? First of all, it's called it's bold predictions. Yes, Jason. it's not called just say stupid things into a microphone. Well, sure. Well, let oh, me man. let me uh, <laughs> let me give my reasoning for believing that Sam Donald could actually be a top twelve quarterback this year. First of all, there's a lot of precedence for this. Uh, you look back, and every single year on average, there are two quarterbacks that are outside of the top sixteen drafted that finish as a quarterback one, but half of them won every single year on average is undrafted so we're it's not like oh man we were he was quarterback 16 ADP and then we got no it's the entire fantasy community just completely got it wrong and whether it's Ryan Fitzpatrick or Blake Bortles or Alex Smith or, and Darnold's uh, your guy and Darnold is the one that I think has a path forward to actually step forward uh, Sam Darnold if you didn't realize or remember when he started he was the youngest starting quarterback in NFL history. He is currently a little baby boy. He will be going into this season the same age that rookie quarterback last year went into uh, his rookie season, Joe Burrow. And this is a team in the Panthers that they looked around. They had draft capital. They had the number eight. They, had, they, they took a look and they said, this guy is younger than Joe Burrow, has NFL experience, has talent. Like Teddy Bridgewater is safe. And while both Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Donald were checking it down and throwing inefficient passes in an inefficient offense, Donald actually can air it out. He has the physical talent. He has a cannon arm. Um, and so when I, when I look at this, I think about last year without Christian McCaffrey, Bridgewater was the quarterback 19 already. He had five top 12 performances. Um, you know, he, threw, uh, he was the quarterback 10 through the first 10 weeks last year. This is Teddy Bridgewater. N Darnold has a higher ceiling than Bridgewater. Now he has even a better cast of characters. You're telling me we love Christian McCaffrey? Obviously, yeah. everyone does. Partially because of what he does in the passing game. DJ Moore, 
Robbie Anderson, Terrace mm-hmm. Marshall. They even added I like him. the postman. This offense is loaded. And while you could Can say – we stop talking about the postman? Oh, no, man? never. He's, he <laughs> why, del- he why delivers he, on time. Why are you burying him? He's had a better chance this year getting paid by Carolina than he had last year in Arizona. Yeah, I don't he know. did. He has a better shot. So you have a guy that the team went out, targeted, traded assets for on a loaded offense. Where last year the quarterback who was Meh Palooza um, was all you know already decent for fantasy. And then I want to remind people about the Adam Gase effect. We have seen it with player after player after player after player after player. But most importantly, there's one to talk about. It's a quarterback. That's Ryan Tannehill. And how much he just flat out sucked when it was time. He was on a 16-game pace through his two seasons with uh, Adam Gase for 3,200 yards. Exact same, in fact, a little bit less than what Sam Darnold was on pace when he had him. Uh, if you look at some of the higher uh, projection stats, some of the, the expected points added type of stuff, Sam Darnold over the last two years was the second worst at that stat. Well, the two years that Tannehill was with Adam Gase, he was 33rd out of 39 in EPA. He sucked. The last two years, Ryan Tannehill's been number one. Adam Gase holds people back, for sure. His offense was mind-numbingly stupid. So when we've seen Sam Darnold suck, yeah, some of it's on him. Uh, he's it. We all remember him seeing ghosts out yes. there. The most unfortunate time ever. But this is a little baby boy uh, playing – with Adam Gase. Well, that's why he's scared of ghosts. Right? I mean, we all get, are scared of ghosts. Get the guy a night light for the <laughs> huddle. It's dark in there. <laughs> but I, I I think that Sam Darnold actually has physical talents. And maybe this is, you know, the bias of when he was drafted, I thought he was a really good prospect. Obviously, most of the NFL did as well. You but have it, really been behind the scenes, you have been just inappropriately pro Sam Darnold all off season. So I, I, this is not new. They, right. It's bold to the listeners. It's not bold for our office. Now I did make you move this bold prediction up to top 12. Yeah, that's true. I from had top, top 15, 15 and you were like, sure, let's go. Well, I, I think it's in the range of outcomes. The, the Adam Gase, the talent and the offense. Those are the three reasons. And when I'm drafting someone super duper late undrafted, he's the quarterback 27. I think he checks a lot of boxes for being the guy who goes from undrafted to top 12. He certainly has all of the weapons, and if your exclamation when you go, that's Teddy Bridgewater, if that exclamation ends up true where Darnold is an actually better talent than Bridgewater, which is super TBD, but if that's true, he has weapons to support it. So, I, I dude, I'd love to see it happen. So would Sam Darnold. <laughs> um, and so would this show because yeah. we would do more Darnold Schwarzenegger impressions. Yeah. And, uh, Mike, what is your first bold prediction for this episode so i mentioned it at the top of the show so i'm going to start it off with this one my first spicy bold take damian harris will finish the season as a top 20 running back you're 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 making the sour face at me it's not sour no that was oh. a that was me deciding if top 20 was is that bold enough no, that, well, i don't feel like that's bold enough it's you know where do you have him ranked andy i well andy okay uh, I ha- well, I mean, are you doing a bit? You look at my rankings and do your bold predictions based off of that? No, I do not. I, I have him at twenty four. I have him at thirty three. Okay, so if you're projecting a running back at thirty three, hearing someone say he's going to finish inside the top twenty, I will go. Well, that's a bold take. Just like I have uh, Clyde edwards alaire as a running back one, and I hear you say he's outside the top twenty, I go, ooh, that's a bold take. Come on, Mike, make him your number one. I. <laughs> Come on. He's going to finish. <laughs> Damian Harris back. will finish higher than Christian McCaffrey. Thank you. Now it's finish. bold. Look back at what has happened with. with uh, I was just bait. All I was doing was trying to bait oh, the top 15 pick here. I, I, like can't, I can't do that because the pass catching is. Can I get a 19? Not there. Can I get a top 19? You got it. All, All right. right. I'll yeah, move him up. We did Damian it. Harris. Yeah, reread your bold prediction, please. This, yeah, let's hear this it. This is really aesthetically pleasing. All right. Damian Harris will finish. As a top 19 running back. <laughs> Let's oh, go. Oh, yeah. The people yeah. love it. The people so love it. So bold. All right. So here's where <laughs> – let's get to the meat. All right. Go, Mike. Go. Just remember remember what has happened here, the story uh, that Damien Harris is writing in the NFL. Last offseason, everything was building towards him being the primary guy for New England. 
got hurt in preseason, came in, he only played 10 games, but in those 10 games, he was a top 24 running back in five out of the 10, and he did that with two touchdowns because Cam Newton was stealing all of the goal line carries. Last year, Cam Newton had 10 carries in, or he had the 10th most carries inside the red zone. He had the fourth most. Oh, yeah, we need it. Thank you. Mm, farewell. Farewell, booty scooter. Yeah, uh, sorry. Had to hit it. He will Last not, chance. He will no longer be scooting his booty in New England, where last year he had the fourth most carries inside the five. That's a lot. Those carries will now go, per, like, not every single one of them, but the bulk of them will go to Damian Harris. This offense, they just signed Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry. You think they paid those two tight ends a whole bunch of money to play one at a time? No, they're going to be in two tight end sets. They're a run-heavy team. They already had a great offensive line. Uh, it it like Run-heavy, like I said, last year the third most rushing attempts in the league. I'm not saying that Damian Harris is a top 10. I'm saying he's going to be top 19, and he has provided – That's right, you he are. Has, he has an incredible value – where he is going in drafts, and it, like, I don't think that casual league, if you haven't drafted yet in, in your casual league, you're going to be able to extract some serious value. Now, we can't, I, I can't in good faith say Damien Harris top 10 because the passing volume just, it's not going to be there. But inside the top 20 every year, you do have a handful of these running backs that aren't pass catchers. They get it done with, with just the rushing yardage and the touchdowns. And Jason, you kind of alluded to it at the top of the show. An outlier season where Damian Harris scores 12-plus rushing touchdowns, while we're not saying that's going to happen, that's in the realm of possibilities for this team. We call that a LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah, exactly. The weighted blanket of Cam Newton has been removed from the team. So it definitely – it feels more – we said it before. It feels more optimistic across the board because the possibilities aren't boxed in. Like, the Cam offense was going to be – we knew what it was going to be. We watched it. It was hard to watch at times. So, yes, that is um, – there's a lot of optimism, and I could see top 19. And, oh, and like, for sure. Ramondre Stevenson has looked great in the preseason. That's true. But he's he's still a rookie. And Oh, for sure. And, and Bill – I mean, you know Bill. Bill. Bill's a wild card is the only reason I brought that up. Is like Bill could just do that from he, day one. And he go, is a and wild you, card, but he's also a bit of a curmudgeon and old school that I think that the rookie's going to have to earn his way onto the field, much he, like Damian Harris had to. Who did he used to use around the goal line? I'm trying to remember the guy Le that Garib always played. Blunt? No, I know that, but the special teams. Oh, oh one of those special uh, Brandon teams Bolden? Go, Brandon yes, Bolden. that's right. That's the, the the name that haunts the dreams of many. Yes. Um, all right, great. Uh, my second bold prediction for today's episode is what I'm calling the five-pack of flips. <laughs> I, I, I really couldn't come up with a title. Look, we, we got to get back to marketing. That's flips with a Z. Oh, oh now, man. now are you in? Yeah, that's uh, super cool. Flip flops with a Z. <sighs> yeah. Soups, cool. All what? Here's what we've talked a lot about these situations where you have wide receiver twos, wide receiver ones by ADP, how they perform. I have a five pack of players that are being drafted behind their counterparts at the wide receiver position that I will be, that I believe will finish ahead of them. Now this happened. 11 times last year. There were 11 teammates that were drafted second by ADP that ended up finishing fantasy-wise ahead of their teammate that finished first. So I've got five, and I'm not considering this bold prediction a home run unless all five hit. So it is a pack. This is a parlay. They all have to hit. Oh. And then I get the applause. Oh, man. Okay. If only four or five hit, I don't get it. That's how a parlay works. Uh, that's right. It doesn't pay out. So here are the five. Julio Jones ahead of A.J. Brown. Oh, man. Julio, I believe, will demand more targets and still has the physical ability. He will end up ahead of A.J. Brown. Number Look, two. I demand respect in this office, and I'm still not giving any. Well, you're, it's the tattoos. You, you demand, demand what you don't deserve, Mike, but... <laughs> I mean, it ain't coming. Uh, and you're a pirate. So uh, Chris Godwin Someday. above Mike Evans is the second flip okay. by ADP. Okay. Debo Samuel above Brandon Ayuk is the third. Cooper Cup ahead of Robert Woods. And T. Higgins over Jamar Chase. I think the mm. first one there is going to be your, your, the tough one. Your, your hardest. Sure. Uh, way to come through on all five. Julio over 
AJ Brown is you, you might hey, look that's that's hard to come by. I'm I'm concerned about Julio Jones. I brought him up as reluctantly brought him up as a bust just because of his ADP. Uh, but Andy, if you I mean if you really want to get spicy, I think there's a six you need to add. I'm not adding AJ Green above DeAndre Hopkins. If that was the one you were baiting, you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is two of these I didn't even realize this because I'm looking at the ones that did it last year. Robert Woods was drafted behind Cooper Cup and it, uh, was the better fantasy player. And Brandon Ayuk was drafted below Debo last year and was the better fantasy player. Some are due to injury, right? Like the, Marvin Jones over... I'm looking over, at this list, and the majority of them are due to injury. Uh, several of them are for sure, yeah. Uh, or, or suspension. You know, Fuller and Brandon Cooks probably wouldn't have ended up that way without that. Uh, Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. But uh, I'll take injury. That's fine. Uh, the path to it, success, part, it doesn't it's matter. Part of the game. You know, Jefferson and Thielen were both healthy. And uh, yes. that was a situation where Jefferson ended up ahead of him. So uh, we shall see. But that's my second bold prediction. The five-pack of flips with a Z. All right. I like it. Speaking of a five-pack, I'm going to the well. It's my yearly fantasy trap team for my bust call. I've done this on all of our bust shows over the last several years. Currently, I do not give myself a win last year. You don't? I don't on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because Brady was good. Um, Godwin obviously wasn't, uh, but he was injured. The running game was bad, but I guess Mike Evans was still pretty good. Yes, he was. Now that I say it, I mean, I should get a win. But <laughs> I'll um, give you half credit. I well, mean, think, even with no credit and don't there, you normally – I mean, hold on a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you – you did this with the Patriots. Yes. And they won the Super Bowl. Yes, but it was a huge win. I, I, it's not my point. My okay. point is they won the Super Bowl. And then I did it with and Brady And you again. did it with Brady and the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they, they won, won the, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. So right. I'm just saying I'm setting the table for yeah. your Super Bowl winner. Right, Super Bowl winner. Um, it's going to be a little harder this year. It's going to be real bold, but um, this is for fantasy. So I right now over the last five years, not including last year, I would have an 80% hit rate. I, I'm hitting these. This is true. Um, and this year... This year, the team that I think is a universal bust for fantasy is the Cincinnati Bengals. Their oh, ADP brother. is asinine. It is cockamamie. It is absolutely nonsensical. Define cockamamie. The ADP for the Bengals passing attack already bakes in the assumption that they are elite. The only other team that is having ADP like this is the Dallas Cowboys who we have seen be elite with Dak, who has uh, more talented, more proven assets on the field. We have, uh, you know, I've, I've brought up Chase as as a as a bust candidate. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and now you get to do it again. <laughs> but it's beyond just Chase and the bad vibes of the preseason. Joe Burrow has not been great and is coming off of a very difficult knee injury. Jamar Chase is better than A.J. Brown was last year for this team. But that doesn't mean... A.J. Green. Yes, A.J. Green. Thank you. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's good for fantasy. That could be bad for fantasy because now T. Higgins might not be able to do what he would have been able to do. Tyler Boyd, who's being drafted still very relevantly high, I think he's like the wide receiver 36, uh, is, is... I mean, the upside just doesn't exist there. Burrow is being drafted high, and, and Joe Mixon is one of those players where we've talked about him. The volume itself is usually king and is enough. But when I'm on the clock and I'm staring at Joe Mixon, you just have that feeling like you're having a hard time. He's going to let you down again. Um, I view this team very, very similar, very similar to how I viewed the 2019 Cleveland Browns. And on that roster, they universally busted with the exception of Chubb. Chubb had a good year. He yes. had the volume. But Jarvis was drafted high and busted. Baker was the quarterback four and busted. Uh, Odell Beckham was drafted super high and busted. I, I am avoiding this team to the best of my ability for where they are going. And if you think about it, this is a team that's being like drafted like they're elite. They have been really bad under Zach Taylor. 23rd in pace of play 29th at points per game 29th at total yards 27th at passing yards and passing That's from touchdowns. last year right yes from last okay. year and not all of Zach Taylor but it's just one of those things where it's like we are expecting a huge breakout drafting it as if it's already happened and I don't even think it's going to happen plus they are in the hardest this second 
hardest division. I mean, I'm, I'm not convinced Zach Taylor's a great head coach, and he's in a division with really great coaches who see this guy over and over. you got to play the Steelers twice. you got to play the Ravens twice. I think the Browns' defense is good. It's not a tough sell to me. I'm, I'm on board with it. Mixon is still a player that I think will have fantasy relevance, but maybe below ADP. I mean, we were talking in the office. We both keep passing on him. Yeah, I mean, we I'm, don't know why. We're like, this is not fair. I am willing to draft Mixon because of the volume, but yeah, it's, it's really true. Whenever I'm push come to shove and whatever my ranking says, I'm like, eh, Gibson, Mixon, let's go Gibson. Uh, for me, Clyde, Mixon, let's go Clyde. Um, so I keep pushing Mixon down. Mike? All right, my final spicy take, my bold prediction for 2021. Andy, you had a flip. You had a five-pack of flips, and, yeah. it, and you mentioned... Oh, Chris Godwin. Drafted later than Mike Evans. You think Chris Godwin finishes higher than Mike Evans. And this spicy, shameless, bold prediction says you did not go far enough. Dun, dun, dun. Antonio Brown becomes the most valuable fantasy wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Bucks Aneers. <laughs> I like that I wanted right in the middle of the, the team name. Buck, what? I, Aneers. I had a decision I had to make on the fly. Do I shorten to s Bucks Ooh. or do I just steamroll through and get the whole word out? I think you know where you I closed landed. with Aneers. Yeah. And here's, here's where, and no one's projecting this in fantasy drafts or it's in bold. our, but this is like something to me that could actually happen. Let's look at the history of Antonio Brown. I mean, not mentioning, well, I will mention it. He's one of the best wide receivers of this generation. Antonio Brown will go down historically as one of the best wide receivers of all time. And it's not speculation to say Tom Brady likes Antonio Brown. Go back to the Raiders drama when Antonio Brown froze his feet off and, <laughs> and like there was all this craziness happening with the Raiders. And then he got released. And Antonio Brown is immediately picked up. Uncle Bill grabbed the phone and said, AB, come over to our team. And he starts right off of the street. And he gets a 29% target share. He finished that game four for 56 and one. Off the street into the New England Patriots offense that, by the way, the Patriots offense has retired many, many prolific wide receivers. They've gone into training camp. They thought they were like, oh, I'm going to go one last shot here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride it out, try and get a championship with the Patriots. And they go... Nah, man, this this is not for me. And they end off, they they sail off into the sunset. Where what happened last year? Well, Antonio Brown off the street yet again for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he walks right into a twenty percent target share. In fact, since he started, when in, it was like week nine, I believe, all three Tampa Bay wide receivers were healthy. He had a higher target and recep reception share than Chris Godwin, and now. Antonio Brown has an actual offseason with Tom Brady. He has an actual offseason in the offense that he is going to be a big part of. Last year, uh, Mike Evans finished okay for fantasy football, but you saw him disappear. You had six games where Mike Evans had five or fewer targets. And I think that Antonio Brown might just still be a top-tier wide receiver. Yes, he but, is. He is old. Oh, gosh. But, but Mike. <laughs> yes, voice of public opinion. <laughs> Isn't he? Antonio Brown, like 33 years old now. That's what I was going to say. He is older now, but Antonio Brown's true success in the NFL has been as a tactician, has been as a an elite separator, guy, a, a guy that has several release moves off the line. He is uh, he's a better athlete than his measurables. Like if you go back and look at his 40 and stuff, he's actually faster than that on the field. But he is a top-tier wide receiver because he learned the craft. It's not because he's just bigger, strong. He's not DK Metcalf, I'm faster and bigger than you. That's yeah, the, how I beat you. Antonio Brown's a small guy. The Jerry Rices and, yes. and Larry Fitzgeralds, they're just great at football. They know what the DBs are doing. They know what the defense is doing. They know how to set up their routes, and, and they are great. I personally – Love the value of Antonio Brown in drafts. He's he's definitely one of my usual uh, mid late round targets. So I'm I'm fine with this. And also, I mean, he's over a decade younger than his quarterback. So he, I yes, mean, in the eyes true. of Brady, he's a spring chicken. It's funny because Godwin is almost a decade younger than Brown. 
<laughs> so I'd be goodness. If Antonio Brown's a better wide receiver than 25 year old Chris Godwin, Mike will be the bold king of the year. All right, I like it. You have been in the Antonio Brown camp all off season, and I've definitely it's definitely given me pause when we're doing these drafts and you think about him late. Like, what if that's true and what you're getting? Because yeah. this is again, this is a bold prediction show. Let me let me put it this way: Tom Brady. If he ha if Antonio Brown is anything close to what you're saying, this is this is one of the best offenses in history. Yeah. Like legitimately, he yeah, has a great be. offensive line, three elite wide receivers. Like legitimately, think about it. All three of these guys have finished in the top three in fantasy. Am I right? Yes. You are. Brown's been one many times. Godwin was two. I'm pretty sure Evans has been in that range before. I'm not sure his highest finish, but yes, Mike. No one's going to argue that Mike Evans, who's had a thousand Isn't yards a, he's every the most year elite of his of career. All of them. Yeah, I think they're looking. Mike at, Evans has been the number two overall fantasy wide receiver. So you've had you've had three players that might still all be in their prime, Gronk, or close to it. Uh, Gronk has been pretty valuable in his own right, uh, time to time. And also, if you've watched preseason first team snap counts, because I I had some questions with OJ Howard coming back. Gronk is. Gronk is interesting. We <clears throat> we have not brought his name up almost at all uh, through this offseason Gronk, process. Gronk. <laughs> but oh, we could add that to the to the conk. <laughs> we shouldn't. Um, yeah, but uh, he is he is interesting. I mean, you want a, a guy who could catch a touchdown. Obviously, a lot of mouths to feed in this offense, and this is why we like Brady because at all we might not know who's going to get it this game, but Brady gets it all. Absolutely. So I like it. It's going to be a very interesting year. Bold predictions. Finished. All right, we want to thank uh, Traeger Grills. Yeah, we do. Oh, man, I do. We just had a um, the greatest draft we've ever had. Traeger Grills came out. Traeger Grills cooked up. Chad Ward cooked up. Ribs, brisket. Burn-ins. Burn-ins. Some peach cobbler. Some beans, some potato some salad. Some baked beans I've ever had in my life. I didn't know now baked you did beans a, could be something special. Two-day recovery, right? I'm, I am not recovered, Andy. So, it well, I'll let you know how so long it takes. But um, it was every every single thing was smoked on a Traeger. Your taste buds will be winning every week with that delicious Traeger wood fired grill on game day. Unlike reaching for a quarterback in the second round, there's no risk when you cook on a Traeger. Set it, forget it. Maintain constant temperatures. Perfect results for every cook. And they got Wi Fi, Mike. Wi Fi. You see the play on words with Wi Fi and fire. How Look, it combines for Wi-Fi. You know I love technology. You know I love a good pun. And we have a perfect fusion right here. You get to step away from the grill and then monitor everything, the grill temperatures. You, you can browse hundreds of recipes that they have right on your phone, and you can grill, smoke, bake, roast, braise, barbecue, cook all day, every game day. Burgers, wings, brisket, brownies? Okay, I'm in. Uh, Traeger grills are fueled by all natural hardwood pellets that give you real wood fired flavor in every bite. Go ahead and lock in a Traeger grill in your lineup by heading to Traeger.com slash footballers today. Look, we, we know you're thinking about it. Like, should I, should I get the Traeger? Yeah, that's the answer. We did that, uh, quite a while ago. Yep. And Mike, we want to thank pristineauction.com. We certainly do the best sports memorabilia site of all time right now. There is a Brandon Ayuk oh, signed jersey. Oh, can. And it ends tonight, and it's sitting at 26 bucks. An auction that ends tonight, a signed Derrick Henry jersey. That thing's sitting at just $52. Get good prices, get fun uh, memorabilia. PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit, and we will be back tomorrow. MVP episode, Brooks? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. The hits keep coming. We'll see you then, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.